All right, join me once again here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is my good buddy Rick Perlstein. Rick is, of course, a writer, a historian, and the New York Times best-selling author of several books, including Nixon Land and The Invisible Bridge, all of which you can find at rickperlstein.net. You can also follow him on Twitter at Rick Perlstein. Rick, thank you so much for being on the show again. Hi, Matt. Congratulations on your anniversary. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate it. Uh, you were guest number one. You were guest, I think, 200 and 300. You're my kind of my milestone guest here. I think I was um, also guest on, uh, number 80, 87, too. Yeah, I think so too. And then so uh, some milestones and not so milestone parts here. Um, but Always so, a pleasure. Rick, yeah, yeah. Well, so Rick, you have a new report in the latest issue of In These Times and also on these uh, online at In These Times, I think it's dot com, yeah, about it's com. Sh- Chicago they're about, Mayor they're all about the commerce that in these times. Exactly, those guys, yeah. Oh, man, let's not even get into that. Um, so about Chicago Mirror Rahm Emanuel, and it's called How to Sell Off a City. And it's a really, really in-depth piece on how really horrible Rahm Emanuel is, but I, you start out in the article discussing a woman named Deborah Quatso. So if people aren't familiar, tell us exactly who is Deborah Quatso. Well, Chicago has an appointed school board. So the mayor gets to kind of unilaterally, not kind of, unilaterally chooses who governs the schools. There's no school board elections or anything like that. And one of uh, the people he inherited, a buddy of his, was uh, Penny Pritzker, the billionaire heiress who became the commerce secretary, who you know was really awful in her own right. I mean, she ran Hyatt, which had a terrible labor record. You know, the, the family made their fun, uh, fortune, you know, through the very mobbed up uh, Teamsters uh, pension fund, all kinds of awful stuff, just a real plutocrat monster. And when she uh, decamps to uh, work for that Kenyan socialist Barack Obama as commerce secretary, <laughs> he had to appoint a new school board member. And the woman he chose, this Deborah Quatso, basically runs an investment fund that invests in companies that privatize schools, uh, charter school operators, uh, vendors, uh, people that create software to replace teachers, all sorts of things. I mean, it's like a direct conflict of interest. And the fascinating thing is when I started writing this article, it was about a year and a half ago for Chicago Magazine. They, they, they kind of assigned it. And so I did the reporting actually about a year ago. And I discovered this astonishing fact that basically they hired, Rahm Emanuel hired onto a school board, someone who had the power to basically write herself checks. And lo and behold, <laughs> it turns out that um, the Chicago Public Schools has built you know, about about three times more with her companies since she went to work for the school board and no one did anything about it in, in that entire year. Uh, there was no publicity, but then just kind of a month ago, the Sun times reported on this and it was discovered that basically uh, she was in fact um, using her position on the school board to uh, enrich the companies that she was invested in. So literally, the Sun-Times reported, I got it in front of me here. So in the three and a half years prior to appointment, the company uh, earned some $930,000. Uh, but just in the year, uh, the past year, in December, $2.9 million in businesses from Chicago Public Schools. That's a lot of money. And that is that to me seems like a gigantic bloody scandal. Right. Here. I mean, it, 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 it's like, you know, like uh, having an alderman who's a paving contractor or wins the paving contract. You know, I mean, this is so old right. school. Did you get did you did you get to the part of that article about like the, the contract for like twenty four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine point nine nine cents? <laughs> That's because if it's if it's twenty five grand, it gets like an automatic review. But so right. they literally went up to the cent exactly. to keep it underneath and- the Oh, and, so and, and horrible. Just, but despite that, that 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 rather gallant piece of evidence, she claims that she has nothing to do with any of this and didn't know any of what was going on. Sure, she didn't. Okay, so like, all right, so clearly this person is unbelievably corrupt. And and look, let's be fair, Chicago has the Ch- Chicago political machine is is a history of pretty pretty damn corrupt. Yeah, and this is but, the new so, machine. It's a privatization machine. It's basically where people are kind of the old patronage machines being replaced by sort of policy entrepreneurs and uh, kind of brokers who sell off the city to private interests. 
But at least, I, I, okay, so one, the, the old way was bad, but at least a lot of the money was sticking <laughs> to like businesses in Chicago, right? These are right. like going to like international firms and stuff like that. Right, right. So like, <laughs> you know, we have here in Chicago where I'm living and, you know, like suffering the snow, we have, we call it LaSalle Street. That's where the, all the fancy kind of kind of uh, corporate lawyers and bond lawyers are. So at least you know, kind of the, under daily, under the first daily, at least kind of the money in the second daily, when they had what they call pinstripe patronage, at least the money stayed on the Salt Street. But <laughs> under something like Chicago's parking meter deal, basically we sold off our parking franchise to a consortium that includes the, the sovereign wealth fund of the kingdom of <laughs> Abu Dhabi. So, you know, every time you get built by this one of these parking meters, uh, you know, you're giving money to this, you know, kind of potentate, you know, out there in the desert sands. And uh, I mean, the, the parking meter deal is kind of pretty notorious as one of the worst, probably the worst um, uh, privatization deal ever, ever signed. One of the one of the consequences of it is if the city is like, well, we don't want parking meters on the street because they're holding up traffic or we want to hold hold up traffic by putting in more, you know, like anytime you want to get rid of a parking meter you have to pay this uh, consortium of investment banks and, and, and potentates um, the money that that parking meter would make over the next 75 years over the entire wow. length of the contract. And the city, basically the bill comes due in a month. Uh, it's, it's astonishing. I mean, basically we turned over to this uh, corporate consortium the power to police our streets. What's even crazy about that, and to to and we're, to be fair to Rahm Emanuel, which he doesn't deserve any type of fairness because he's a horrible human being. But to be fair, it was uh, the last mayor near the end of of his his reign, Richard M. Daley, who signed the parking uh, the parking uh, That's meter. That's right. And, thing. and well, the great but, thing is we I, have but, a uh, we have a we have a mayoral election coming up, and yeah. uh, it's coming up on February twenty fourth. And Rahm Emanuel kind of had a chance to, of course, join a lawsuit to get rid of this. He could have renegotiated it. In fact, he did renegotiate it. He he gave us the gift of free parking on Sundays, but then he just extended the parking uh, to, from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. So it was a wash. And then he sends out these mailers uh, pointing out that one of the, the, the very progressive aldermen he's running against uh, voted for the parking meter deal. But of course, the alderman, 47 of 50 voted for, or I think it was 47 of 50 or maybe 45 of 50 voted for it because they were lied to about it. They were told that it would basically pay for itself and make money many times over when it turned out to be the opposite. 